when we study organic chemistry, somehow uh, it is felt like that we need to know the differences between organic and inorganic chemistry. Welcome to Fast Tutorial once again and in this video I am going to explain some differences uh, train case of traits between organic and inorganic compounds. As you know that this is the third tutorial of the organic video series and uh, in my previous video I explained about vital force theory and then I explained about hydrocarbons and now we need to know the differences between organic and inorganic compounds. If you look closely the traits and the differentiating characters of the factors that based on which part we can differentiate organic and inorganic compounds. Firstly, that is elements. Organic compounds are made up of mainly, mainly carbon. Simply, and with this, with this, we can see that there is hydrogen, it can be sulfur, phosphorus, oxygen, nitrogen, and halogen. Usually. So mainly there is carbon. That's for sure because it's all about hydrocarbon. Organic compounds is all about hydrocarbons. So as it is hydrocarbon, we know that carbons, carbon is the essential, essential elements for life. So with carbon, which is main elements, we can have hydrogen, sulfur, phosphorus, oxygen, nitrogen, and halogens and all. So these are the participatory elements. But in Inorganic compounds, there is no limitations. Any elements, any elements, any elements can be there. So there is no essential elements. It can be water, any type of acid, I mean inorganic acid like sulfuric acid, nitric acid, whatever you can say that sulfur dioxide, phosphorus trichloride, ammonia, whatever. So there is no limitations. Any elements. But in case of organic, the must element is carbon. Okay, number one. Number two is nature of bond. So, mainly organic compounds are made up of covalent, covalent bond. So we can say the nature of bond is mainly, mainly covalent bond. We know, we know that carbon is connected with associate carbons or hydrogens through the covalent bond. But in organic compounds, both can happen. I mean, it can be uh, electrovalent bond, it can be electrovalent bond, and it can be covalent bond. So you know that electrovalent or ionic bond. So in, in organic compounds, it can be electrovalent or it can be covalent. Melting and boiling point. Usually what happens, I mean, the melting points and the boiling points of organic compounds comparatively low than the inorganic compounds so it says that it's comparatively 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 low and that is um, that is actually less than less than around 350 degrees celsius around less than 350 degrees celsius the melting and boiling point like the the boiling point of methanol is around 62 degrees celsius and the melting point of benzoic acid is like around 121 degrees celsius so it's just an example but around less than 350 degrees celsius so comparatively the melting and boiling point is low in you know organic compounds and inorganic compounds is comparatively higher higher and it's about more than more than 700 degrees Celsius like simply we know that melting point of sodium chloride the table salt is uh, 801 degrees Celsius and the boiling point of table salt is 1465 degrees Celsius so comparatively it's higher now you see the solubility in case of organic compounds it is not soluble and now we need to know what is soluble but solvent polar solvent and organic solvent in case of solubility we can say that there is two things that is polar polar solvent that is water and this is organic solvent and in organic solvent 
like benzene and ether is organic solvent. Usually what happens? Polar solvent. Organic compounds are not usually soluble to the polar solvent like water. But hydroxyl is there. So alcohol, alcohol is soluble in water. So in case of polar solvent, we say that usually not soluble. You can say usually not soluble. But in organic solvent, because this is organic compounds, in organic solvent like benzene and ether, it is soluble. It is soluble. And what happens in inorganic compounds? In inorganic compounds, just reverse. You say that in polar solvent, they are soluble. They are soluble. But in organic solvent like benzene and ether, inorganic compounds are not soluble. Are not soluble. So that is important. Okay? So as we know that organic compounds are not usually soluble in polar solvent except alcohol. Alcohol. Okay? Combustions. When the organic compounds, organic compounds uh, are combust like oxygen, then nothing is rest. I mean, it just totally converted into carbon dioxide and water. So there is nothing left. It's totally, when combustion happens, occurs through these organic compounds, it's totally there is nothing left. But in inorganic compounds, that is not totally combustible but if there is totally combustible there is something left so we can say something something left in case of electric conductivity in case of electric conductivity pure organic compounds are not electric conductive not electric conductive but inorganic compounds like Ionic compounds or electrovalent compounds, they are electric conductive as because there is ionic bonds, so that is made up of cations and anions. You know about uh, covalent bonds and covalent compounds and ionic bonds and ionic compounds. Among them, ionic compounds, those are actually in uh, liquid state, they can act as an electric conductive because they have some sort of like ions, cations and anions not in covalent compounds but in electrovalent or ionic compounds so in case of inorganic ionic compounds electric conductivity are there but in organic compounds there is no electric conductivity number of compounds we know that the number of compounds in organic compounds is much more higher than inorganic compounds so if you can guess the number it's uh, around around what i say and more than 8 millions I think more than more than 8 millions uh, compounds organic compounds are there and here um, around uh, around 0 0.1 millions now you see the difference between organic and inorganic compounds the number the number of organic compounds can be more than 8 millions because of three reasons, I have said it earlier. Number one, catenation. Number two, isomerization. And number three, polymerization. And 0.1 million around is inorganic compounds. Homologous series. There is homologous series. We know that alkane, alkene, aldehyde, fatty acid, ketone, ether, ester are present in organic chemistry. So in an organic compounds. So homologous series, there is presence, present, I mean homologous series are present but here this is absent there is no chance to create any homologous series in case of inorganic compounds and reaction process usually what happens the reaction speed or the the rate of reactions is slower is lower so we can say in case of organic compounds this is slow slower and this is quicker so According to the reactions, rate of reactions, if we say this is traits and if we want to explain the, the differences between organic and inorganic compounds, we can say this is slower and this is quicker. So simply this is a little bit explanation from my side regarding organic and inorganic compounds differentiations. So you must remember the traits 
and from your best understanding this is uh, this is something that we, I mean is all about uh, exam driven lecture so if there is any questions from your exam paper you can find that the differences between organic and inorganic compounds write it down so if there is any problem let me know in the comment sections what is your feeling and of course thank you so very much for watching this tutorial i'm coming up with next uh, naming of organic compounds we'll start from alchem